Take two. Uh, back uh, in algebra, you solve many systems of equations like this. It never got any larger than this. It stayed uh, just a two-variable system of equations. Basically, you had to see where these two lines intersected, <laughs> wherever they intersect. That was your solution. Okay, we're not going to graph them, all right? But that's one way you could solve this system of equations is graph this line, graph this line, see where the two lines meet. You also were taught methods of substitution and elimination. So in other words, you had to get x by itself or get y by itself and then substitute it into the other equation. Or elimination, I could multiply the top one by 2 because that will give me a 6x. The bottom one by 3, that will give me a negative 6x. And then when I add the two equations together, a variable is eliminated and you go about solving from there. Okay? <laughs> Probably don't remember that one as much. Substitution is the one that makes the most sense. Um, it's logical. Um, but those are different ways to solve systems of equations. And if I gave you this now, I am betting that most of you would probably choose substitution. If you had to, you might get this x by itself. Well, x would equal, subtract 6y from both sides, then whatever x equals, substitute it into this one and solve from there. That's probably the way most of you would do it if I gave you the freedom to do it any way you wanted to. Okay? We can solve this system of equations using matrices. Like I said, I probably wouldn't for a small one like this, but I'm going to show you how with a small system of equations like this. But I guarantee you, you will definitely want to use matrices for a system of equations that would contain three variables or four variables or five variables because the amount of algebra you would have to do to figure that out would take up sheets of paper, okay? Kind of fun, all right, for cool people. Uh, but uh, matrices, matrices would definitely be the way I would go with it. But let me show you how it works, okay? So here's a system of equations. You're trying to figure out where, what coordinate satisfies both of those equations. Okay, that's what solving a system of equation means. You're trying to figure out what coordinate x comma y satisfies both of those equations. Okay, so what I can do is change this way of writing the system into an actual matrix equation. Okay, I'm going to change it to a matrix equation. I'm going to put the coefficients in a little 2 by 2 matrix. I'm going to multiply that by the variables x, y in a 2 by 1 and set it equal to huh, the constant. Okay. And let me show you how that is saying the exact same thing as what you see above it. So would you have to take the inverse of yep. the first? Okay. Yep. Hmm. You know that when you multiply matrices together, you go across the row and down the column, like this, right? When you're multiplying by hand. So when I multiply these two matrices together, I have to take 3 times x plus negative 5 times y, and that will equal 21. Well, that's exactly what this says right up here. 3x plus negative 5 times y equals 21. 3x plus negative 5y equals 21. Negative 2x plus 6y equals negative 22. So this matrix equation right here is saying the exact same thing as this algebraic system of equations <laughs> right here. Okay? So really, all we need to do in this matrix equation is solve for the variable. We need to get this matrix here by itself. Okay? We need to get this matrix right here by itself. Okay? Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to call this matrix here, matrix A. Okay? I'm going to call this matrix right here with the variables. I'm going to call this matrix right here matrix A. I'm going to call the variable matrix here matrix X. So I have A times X 
equals, I'm going to call this matrix right here, just matrix B. Okay? So our job, like I said before, when we're solving this equation is to solve for xy. We're trying to get this matrix by itself. We're trying to figure out what xy equals, right? Okay? So in other words, in this little equation down here, a times x equals b, a times x equals b, I'm trying to get x by itself. I'm trying to get this matrix x by itself. So now, if these were numbers, so you if it said 5 times x equals 30, if they were numbers, you would just say divide by 5, right? These are matrices. So you multiply by sides by the inverse of the one you're trying to get to the other side. Can you divide matrices? No. Yes. No. Well, technically you are. Technically you are, because dividing is really the exact same thing as multiplying by an inverse. Okay? So what you will do, go ahead. In a situation that doesn't have a 2 by 2 matrix. It'll, a system of equations will be a, a square matrix. Every time? Mm hmm Yep. Okay. Yep. If there's two equations, there'll be two variables, so you'll have a two by two. Or what if there's... We'll get three equations, it'll have three variables, you'll get a three so by three. If and it's so on. Um, three, three equations, two variables, then couldn't you just pick two of pick them? Pick two of them, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, you kind of have to... But then you'd have to make sure that that satisfies the third right. one, too, yes. But, but if it doesn't, then it wouldn't work for all of them. <laughs> Correct. Then there's not a solution right. that works for all of them. So, yeah. You're not going to get anything like that. But, I mean, like, not for the class, but if ever I need it for yes. something else. Yep, absolutely. So, in order to get x by itself, I need to multiply both sides by the inverse. Okay? Now, there is a small, small detail, too, that you've got to be careful about here. Okay? I have a times x on the left side of the equal sign. I know I need to multiply that side of the equal sign by the inverse of a in order to get rid of it. But you have to do that on the correct side of that side. Hmm. You can't take a times x times a inverse. That wouldn't work. a inverse needs to be multiplied right next to a. So what I say is I, we just do left multiplication. We multiply the left sides of the equal sign. Could you also stick it in between the a and bx? And just go after the b? I suppose. There's really no... You can't put it... You're not going to be able to put it after the b. I don't think the dimensions will match up. The dimensions will not match up, so you won't be able to. So really, that's your only choice. You have to put it on the left side in order for it to multiply <coughs> on the left side. Okay. So does it just matter as long as it's close? Or on the just multiply on the left side. Yeah. So, because here's what happens. When you take A inverse times A, what do you get? 